Just got a text from my buddy right now saying that the wind is very intense right now and it's supposed to get way worse. So that'll be fun for the ride when we test this out. Hey y'all, it's Troyer. We're gonna be installing the Lexan Moto FT4 Pro into this helmet today. So without any further ado, let's get into this. Things I'm gonna use today to install this. I've got the helmet, I have got the package straight from Lexan, and I have a shaker filled with a vitamin supplement from a company called Pure. I don't know, my wife gets it, and it uh, it is absolutely amazing. It's an alternative to energy drinks, basically, for me. And full of B vitamins, full of uh, whatever. It's actually, it's actually categorized as a supplement, so uh, you can boost your energy with no crash and feel very good all day long. Okay, let's get into this. So, first things first, let's open this package from Lexan. Need to sharpen my knife. I've got a reputation around here of always having a sharp knife and, whew, somebody's gonna light me up for cutting towards myself, I'm sure. All right. Oh, nice. Just toss that off the edge. And I'm gonna set my helmet over here for a second. So I have, uh... whoa, they did not send me, wow. They did not send me the FT4 Pro. Apparently they have a newer one and they sent me a dual pack it's called the G16. Check that out. Wow. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's get into it. That. Wow. That is amazing. So my wife will be able to have one too. She still has the old FT4 on her helmet. So um, I guess I'm doing a dual installation today. So here's the box. for those of you that care. Okay, so let me open it in a fashion that allows you to see. I am not a uh, professional YouTuber. I'm just <laughs> some dude that does roofing and uh, rides motorcycles. Okay, that's nice. That, uh, that box makes me feel fancy. Okay, so... <laughs> I gotta choose which one's going on my helmet, and I always go by the VIN number. Uh, so do I want 1539 or 2988? I'll go with 1539. Okay, so <laughs> I'm only doing one. Hmm, that's good. That wind my buddy told me about just came up so I'm gonna have to get creative with the uh, with the mounting system around here so let me figure that out and I'll be right back all right back to it um, I'm going with uh, this one so if you have a dual if you have a, uh, a dual pack if your wife rides if you ride it's good to keep track of which one is yours okay so the way I did that obviously is just by the VIN number on the back because you'll be pairing these with your phones and it's just easier if you're not fighting uh, you know, your headset pairing with your wife's phone and vice versa. Okay, we've got blue and red flashing lights. Let me actually try to pair that with my phone really quick. Um, I don't know if I can do that with you guys being able to see, but let me try. So we've got blue and red flashing lights. We've got Bluetooth down here. Let's oh, LXG16 connected. Cool. So now we have just a flashing blue light, <clears throat> and this one, the old FT4 did not have a flashlight. This one 
boom, flashlight on it. That is so stinking cool. There have been a lot of times where I'm riding at night and I wish that I could uh, just have a little bit of light, you know? You get off the bike, you want to get in your saddlebags for something, and you need some light, so just reach up and boom, you got some light. It's kind of bright. Whew! Didn't your mama ever tell you not to flash yourself in the eyes? All right, now we have accessories. Man, this box, it feels very uh, high-end. How to use your Lexan G16. Boy, that's badass. Quick guide for Lexan G16. Wow. I'm super impressed with the packaging of this. This is nice. Lexan kind of has a name for being a good affordable option. And uh, so their original, originally their packaging wasn't like they didn't put much into it. The product was was a good lower priced product. Um, and I absolutely loved it. I put a bunch of miles on mine. Never had a single issue. The battery life was amazing. Phone calls were clear. But it looks like they even improved the packaging now. So I I have no idea. This this is this is amazing. So uh, we have everything in this package to install this product into our helmets. On the old headsets, the mounting plate used a uh, two millimeter Allen key. This one looks like it's probably about the same. So uh, it comes with a supplied Allen key and of course screws. So you don't have to worry about that. But if for some reason you lost your Allen key, it's two millimeter. If you, if you ride a motorcycle, you're probably pretty proficient with this kind of stuff anyways. Uh, but for those of you that feel challenged by installing something, you don't need to be. Uh, you don't need to be intimidated by it. It's, it's very straightforward, uh, a lot of just common sense. So hopefully this video shows you that. Okay, so we've got a charging cable. And this looks like, I, if I remember correctly, it's a type C charger that if you lose your charger on the road somewhere, super cool. You can just stop and grab it at any gas station. And I'm assuming probably the competition has the same. <laughs> These speakers are definitely upgraded from the, from the old FT4 I had. Um, so you can use this in an open-faced mic, in an open-faced helmet um, with this mic. So you would attach it somewhere inside your helmet like that, and then you got your mic. But, obviously, this is going to be in my helmet, which is a full face. Um, so, you just disconnect that. You don't need that. This is the mic for this setup. So, it's all super self-explanatory. You can't get this backwards. <laughs> Even It only goes together one way, but they still put arrows on it. Um, and then this. Wow, I am... So impressed with this. All right, let's uh, dispense with the formalities. This appears to be a uh, method of holding the wire out of the way. Uh, if you can, let me pull it out. I'm sure the glare on that package is gonna be kind of bad. It's Velcro. So it's this little piece here. And as you can see, that would, it, you put the Velcro patch down uh, wherever you want to hold your wire and then you just pop that over the wire onto the Velcro. It's removable, super nice. I don't, I'm, I'm kind of ashamed to say this, I take such good care of all my stuff, but my helmets kind of take a beating. This one has already fallen off of my bike once and gotten some scratches. Um, so I'm not worried about the paint on this one, but if you got one of those cool ones, I would love to have one of those from Rurock, I think, that's uh, black and it has like a golden eagle on it. I think that's so badass. So now, to install this, you need to take your, uh, obviously, obviously the headset goes on your left side, so you have your hand on the throttle and you can reach up and answer a phone call. Um, <clears throat> so, you reach inside and you pop loose your, 
helmet lining. So I've got that out. Some helmets have a little pouch inside of here that's closed. It's a, like a mesh pocket that you can put the speaker directly into. My wife's helmet has that. It makes it a lot easier. This one does not. And I hope you can see right in here, there's just a little uh, recess in the foam. So that's where we'll put our uh, speakers. So we're going to want to put, let me decide how to do this. Um, I guess what I'll do is install the uh, the mount first. So let's do that. Get that out of the way. That's freaking cool. They've even got a little logo deal on the back. Then you got this piece. So what I do is try to place it approximately where I want it. Uh, the last one I had further back on the helmet just because of this helmet design and I found myself trying to reach back with a heavy jacket on and like it was a little further back so I did temporarily put my wife's FT4 into this helmet um, because with the baby she's not been riding much and I have still been trying to get out there so okay so you just kind of wedge it in there there's foam and the outside shell you just go right in the middle just get it in there and then this will sit right like that roll up my sleeves get this job done and this is all taking a lot longer than it would have to the first time for anything always takes a while uh, my first time with the FT4 system took me about this long and then my second time took like 25% the time. So this is an interesting note. It appears that this is a spacer in case you have a wide shell on your helmet. So you could place this spacer right in there and then it would sit on the mount exactly the same. Uh, and so they included long and short screws for that. We just need the short screws because I'm not putting the spacer in. Set it in place, get the screws started. It's kind of a tight space, I might. Okay, I did catch a thread there, so. I just snugged those. I didn't, uh, I didn't reef them down super tight. I just can't wait, I gotta see how this fits on here. I'm sure I'm looking like an idiot, but uh, <clears throat> It doesn't matter. Oh, so you just have to get it kind of centered and then it appears it slides down into place. Boom. <laughs> nice and secure. Then for removing it, the uh, retention device down there is a ramp shape. So it pops into place, but you should be able to just take it off. It just seems to take some force. So let me do that again just to verify which president president was it that said trust but verify. If you know, please drop a comment because I've been using that quote extensively. Hmm. You know what? I bet it would be a tremendous help if I turn it the right way. Snap it into place. And then let me try to get it out without that tool. Okay, so it works. It's just extremely tight. Um, you're not going to hurt anything pulling it out like that, but you will have to use some force. I'm going to install the speakers next and the microphone. So we have plenty of wireage here. Um, I think I'll disconnect the microphone for right now just to make it uh, a little easier. Eliminate variables is my mantra. So obviously you have a long and a short. The long goes around to the other side of the helmet. So let's, uh, let's do that one first and work our way back. So 
close visor. Reach in here, unsnap your liner so that you can pop it out of the way. Um, and I want to route that wire in behind there. So I'm also going to undo the back one. Take the adhesive off the back. And this should be self-explanatory when you get to your own helmet. Point the wire the direction, obviously, it's going to be running. Whew, sticking to my fingers. This, this adhesive is not a joke. Press it into place. Good. I don't know how the professional YouTubers do it. Everything takes so much longer when you're making a video. I can't imagine stopping and there we go stopping i can't imagine riding ahead of the pack getting to the uh destination like say you're gonna go eat out somewhere and you want to film it i can't imagine riding ahead setting up your camera making everybody wait and then cruising back okay cruising back all right guys we can go now Riding up so you get your shot coming into the parking lot. Getting off the bike, going and collecting your camera gear, carrying it inside. I'm sure you weren't able to see the last speaker go in, so hopefully you can see this one. Just placing it right in the area that uh, is clearly designated for a speaker. Pushing it into place firmly. Uh, I'm not getting the greatest adhesion here because of my helmet design. If I have to, um, I have used super glue before on these and it works just fine. Now I have these extra wires. This one needs to be routed out to here to plug into the back of the unit. So I want to keep it at least that long. This one goes to the mic. So I want to run it out front. I'll tuck it all in later. This, uh, the rest of these wires, can be just tucked in wherever. As long as they don't come out later and bug you, it's fine. Pop this lining back in. The tough part usually is navigating. Oh, that's cool. So they have this helmet designer. You see this, uh, this what would you even call that? piece of plastic and it also has a catch on the back so it catches in here under a lip which holds it it's really nice retention design but they have a low spot here a recess for the wires if you want to run a wire through so you don't have to bend the wires as far down in so that's cool I'm gonna to try to get this pushed into place make sure I have enough wire out and just work it in there it's gonna to be tough just uh, just make it happen. All right, now that we've got that, I don't really want to scuff my visor. Now that we've got that in uh, what seems to be approximately the correct location, let me double check and make sure I have enough wire there. I have just enough. That's yeah, tight. Now that I've gotten that, Everything's kind of falling into place now. I'm gonna pop the lining back in all the way around. Okay, so I'm just tucking these wires away as I go, kind of hiding them up inside where they won't catch on anything. They'll be out of the way. Okay, now I'm going to install the microphone. So connect this. I left this snap undone so that I could keep the wires behind it tuck those wires in behind it and uh, secure them that way. Now I have my microphone in place approximately. Uh, it's right in here. So I'm going to pop that adhesive off now. And as someone once said, your mileage may vary, so don't be afraid to try your own stuff. I'm gonna place that microphone right there so that it's close to my mouth, kind of tucked off to one side. 
but I had a good mounting surface there. That adhesive seems really nice and strong. And that's that. The headset is installed. Um, just gonna double check that all of my, all of my uh, lining is popped back into place. All right, guys, that is it. The headset is installed. Love that light feature. Here we are on some remote back road. <clears throat> and there is the woman. And by the woman, I mean the woman. Go ahead, babe. You set the pace and I'll just follow. We have our Lexan G16 headsets installed and we're on the test ride. So far uh, the pairing process is a little simpler than the FT4 was. Uh, the range does not seem to be as good. I'm not sure why but we just had um, a situation where she slowed down so that I could run on ahead and we we didn't get very far apart. I mean we were well out of sight of each other but um, yeah, the range was less than the FT4 in that situation. I don't know if there was something weird in that specific situation, but yeah, watch out for gravel on this, babe. This road is, if you're comfortable at that pace, then that's fine, but you do not have to go this fast. Look like you're doing really good, though. So the uh, biggest benefit to the Bluetooth system for me is being able to communicate with my wife when I'm riding by myself. I can make a phone call if she wants me to stop and pick something up in town. Lean, lean, lean. That was a beautiful corner. You actually took it pretty good. Um, when we're, you know, if she needs me to get something or needs to see where I'm at or like what time I'll be home or whatever the case is, she can call me and I can talk while I'm riding. I don't have to pull over and try to make a phone call. It's amazing. Um, there's no point in, in being without it. As far as I'm concerned, I'll never be without one again. Um, and then while we're riding, if you don't have one, uh, you're just in proximity with one another. But if you have one, you're together. And it, it turns even if she's on the back of the bike, you know, you can... Suddenly, date night has a lot more options. Yeah, it's amazing quality time because when you're riding, I found that a lot more thoughts come to mind than just sitting at home or sitting in a restaurant. We're trying to make this video happen uh, despite the fact that there's a wind advisory and it's it's uh, supposed to rain so we're out here trying to outrun the rain all the normal people like Eric are at home <laughs> losers <laughs> take 37 good idea because 37 always has less wind than Highway 2 going to Troy. And it's always warmer too. Yeah, you are doing super well, babe. Try doing the Justin Swerve. <laughs> See, this, the reason you practice swerving is so that you don't hit shit like that. So pick a spot on the road that's right in front of you and then kind of last minute swerve around it. Nice. Yeah, I do that all the time, but it's practice and it's actually saved me a couple times when I needed to react quickly. I'm not gonna recommend anybody else do it, except for you, but. Well, yeah, except for you. I recommend that you do it, but I'm not gonna recommend to everybody on YouTube that they do it because I don't want to be responsible if somebody's an idiot. 
All right, go out ahead of me. I'm going to slow down. Go, go, go. Keep going. I mean, we're, we're still very close together. Still crystal clear, though. I want to see what happens when you go around the curve. They never are, well, on this road anyway. Here we are at Osprey Landing next to the Kootenai River. I'm probably blocking your view of the river, but it's a gorgeous, uh, gorgeous spot. So we just have some uh, handful of miles on these headsets so far. And what do you think? What were your, what did you notice versus the old FT4? I was very impressed. It's an extremely windy day. And, for um, Libby, I mean. Yeah, for Libby. <laughs> um, but I could hear every word David said. I wasn't constantly asking what, what. Um, the old um, headset that we had was excellent, but um, when it was windy, it, was, it would get to where it was hard to hear. Um, range seems to be pretty well. We didn't fully test that one out today. But overall, I... I'm super impressed. It's, it's better. What do you think? Um, the range seems to be a little bit less than the previous one, than the FT4. Um, I don't know for sure. We haven't haven't had enough time with it, but there was one spot where we were about a quarter mile apart and around a curve from each other where I feel like the FT4 would have had us still connected and it was getting kind of garbled. Um, but could have just been that circumstance. I don't know. Regardless, it's got more than enough range. Um, it's just, uh, if you plan, if you like to ride a mile ahead of your buddy, well, I don't know what headset to go with, but, um, other than that, so battery life, the FT4 was amazing. I mean, I, I think I got 18 hours one time out of, out of the battery. It had advertised 12 hours and I got 18 hours, um, on a long trip going from here to Amarillo. Um, so I would expect that this one will be the same. The one thing I love about this one is the flashlight feature. That's going to be so much fun. Yeah, it's um, very helpful. Yeah, when when it's dark out and you're coming home and you need to mm -hmm. you need to see for some reason pulling into the garage for crying out loud. There are times where I'm pulling the bike into the garage and uh, the light's not on. Uh, just being able to reach up and click the light on that's going to make all the difference. So mm -hmm. that's huge. Clarity. Like Anna said, we could hear each other super well. Yeah, it is clearer. The, the quality is clearer. Yeah, better sound quality. Mm -hmm. uh, the speakers seem to be better. It seems, I haven't tried, I haven't uh, maxed out the volume yet, but it seems like the speaker quality is noticeably better. That's mm -hmm. probably where we're getting the clarity. Mm -hmm. um, so the other ones were not, I mean, they were pretty sad for listening to music. Uh, it was still a lot better than nothing, but these are noticeably, the speakers are thicker. And they themselves have a covering over them, or the like a, a foam. They're in a foam pocket or whatever. Where the FT4 were not. So overall, I would say this is a uh, a big step up, just from where just from what Lexan offered two years ago. And um, as a as just a standalone setup, I highly recommend it. Highly recommend. Um, I have not, to be fair, tried the competition. I haven't tried a Senna, um, but I don't personally feel a need to. This does everything that I want it to um, for less money, and the it's a smaller company, which I prefer to deal with small companies anyways. Uh, they're great people. You can email them directly, and they'll answer questions you have. Um, so overall, super stoked. We have matching headsets again since uh, for the first time since my stuff was stolen and uh, we can listen to music we can make phone calls 
and uh, we can talk on the road. So that'll be fun because I'm going to have her hop on my bike on the way back and she's never ridden anything bigger than, well I guess she rode my Kawasaki Vulcan back in the day, that was a 1500. It doesn't really count as riding. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty rough. <laughs> I but, just went fast enough to keep it upright. <laughs> that's true. So she's on a her Honda 600. Going from that to the Victory, which is, I think, it's over a 1,000 cc's more than her Honda. Uh, but the Victory is so smooth. The throttle response is smooth and predictable. Um, and the balance is great on Victories. The center of gravity is so low and it handles super well. So uh, once she's moving, she won't feel the weight at all. I'm, I'm more excited for her to try it than she is, but anyways, maybe I'll let you know in the next video. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I hope that this, uh, that this answered some questions you have um, and helped you in the event that you are installing your own Bluetooth system into your headset. And uh, hopefully, if you had a question about whether or not to go with Lexan um, and were hesitating, this pushed you over the edge because I highly recommend them. Um, I'm not going anywhere. I, I am loyal to Lexan. They're a great company. So thanks for watching. See you guys next time.